studio also by Alfred Okanse, who would help us, you know, try and make sense of the numbers in the Upper East region in over the last electoral years. And then now that this activity has been, political activities have been suspended, what does that mean, especially going into December 7? Alfred, thank you for joining us. Uh, to start yeah. with, maybe you might want to walk us through, first of all, paint a picture for us the total population, and then we can go into some specifics now. And rightly so. And uh, the total population in the, that's the voter population in the Upper East region, a little over 741,288 as of the last time we checked mm. um, based on the statistics from the Ghana Fiscal Service and also the Electoral Commission. This is the, the voter population that we have in there. And it is also right to note as well that, Martin, even before today, there's been very limited political activity in that part of the country because yeah. of the curfew that had been imposed over there and then also the fragile security situation. So with this that's coming up right now, it begs the question as to whether now the Electoral Commission would also be looking quite closely how things play out going into the e elections mm. and, the, and the security measures that have to be put in place um, in there. The likes of Mama Yariga, Kleto Savoka, and the MPP candidate that you spoke about, mm. they've been consistent and doing a lot in trying to ensure that going into the election there's some relative peace in that area. But with this development, clearly it creates a, a lot more concern and, and questions as well. So they, this is what we do know. Mm. And over 741,288 of the voter population, that's spread across a number of constituencies as a matter of fact in that particular area. So that's what we do know uh, for the Boko area. Mm. Um, you have an, a number of constituencies in there, including the Boko Central, right. that's um, also held by Mama Yerega um, in, in that particular area. And also, if you look at it, the NDC has, over time, had a hold of the Upper East region, with 14 out of the 15 constituencies they have won consistently at least since 1992 on the average. Mm. The MPP has had only one at least based on what we do know now out of the 2020 elections. Yes. The MPP holds just one constituency in the whole of the Upper East region. Now, based on this analysis, you would then also want to find out how that would also influence the strategy of the, the security agencies mm. going forward. And if you recall, sometime last year, when there was this clash between the, the military and the residents there that led to the death of some of the residents, you had some of the members of parliament, especially the NDC caucus mm. of the Upper East region in parliament, raising concerns that that was just a, a year ago, yeah. that we're getting into an election year. This violence should not get into this period because elections come with its own tensions as well. So these are the dynamics yeah. and the, f and, and the break, up, break up, as you see it, um, in, in the Upper East region. And it is critical to also point out that, I mean, for a long time, the security situation in the Upper East region has, been very, has got very little to do with politics. Absolutely. It's mainly a chieftaincy, chieftaincy concern. So although there are security issues, the political heads and the traditional heads are trying to resolve it. Mm -hmm. However... If it doesn't bode well for either the political parties or the traditional authorities, it allows the miscreants to take advantage of the situation. And Boku, if you look on the Ghana map where it is placed, it is in an enclave that, if we are not careful, could degenerate and even get out of hand and break into other regions of concern. The Electoral Commission, like you're about to walk us through, has pointed out a number of flashpoints. Indeed. And the point that you make about the nature and then also the architecture of the conflict that we find in, in the Boko area. It's, it's, it's worrying to say the least because any time a particular political party is in power, one faction gets empowered. Mm. So when the NDC is in power, one faction now feels empowered. When the MPP is in power, the other faction also feels so empowered. Although so the overarching mm -hmm. concern is... Poli uh, traditional Absolutely. Uh, it has political issues. undertones. It has political undertones. And, and, and some influences that you find in there as well. But these are the flashpoints that the, the Electoral Commission itself um, has identified. Um, There's proud to the 2020 polls. And in fact, based on our own analysis, these flashpoints haven't changed. Boko Central, held by the NDC, Mama Yarga, it hasn't changed. The Binduri constituency hasn't changed. Bogatanga Central, it hasn't changed. Um, that's in terms of the flashpoints as mm. we have it. And then also Bogatanga East, 
hasn't changed. That's Isaac Adongo's area. Yeah. So they say the Bogatanga Central hasn't changed. The Bongo constituency hasn't changed as, as well. And this is um, Edward Bauer. Uh, in the, he, he, he lost the primaries. The, the NDC has a new candidate going into this, this 2024 elections. Right. One strong young man on the ground in there. That also hasn't changed. Busa North, that is uh, the former deputy, uh, that's uh, interior minister, James Agaga. Busa North, that flashpoint area hasn't changed. Busa South, Dr. Clementa Park, that also mm. has, hasn't changed in terms of the flashpoint Chianapaga and the Garu area, all of these areas, based on our own analysis, as we're seeing right now, the mm. dynamics haven't really changed in terms of the flashpoint nature of it. But, well, you know mm. what? We can only wait to and, hear. And that is 10. Well, Those are 10, 10 out of out the of 15, 15 constituencies absolutely. that the Electoral Commission has identified as mm. flashpoints. And that was as of the 2020 elections. elections. And it's good that the EC themselves have identified it as, as flashpoints because then there is a need for them to also ensure whether or not elections can be held there. If the EC, the one that is close with the political authority to uh, undertake elections in an area, says mm -hmm. that it's a flashpoint, it means that there is a possibility elections may, may not be held in these areas. So uh, maybe it's a good time now. So these are the specific areas that the EC identified as flashpoints. Yes. Boko Central, Binduri, Bolga Central, Bolga East, Bongo, Bulsa North, Bulsa South, Chianapaga, and Garu. Let me find out from Christopher, oh, uh, I beg your pardon, um, uh, our Castro. correspondent Castro Senyala who's been with us and uh, mm -hmm. trying to paint a picture for us what exactly is happening there. Now, let's do some politics, although we know we have major security concerns. I'm sure they go hand in hand. Um, the NDC's running mate, Professor J. Nano Pukwajiman, was there a few days ago, probably about just four days ago, admonishing the people to, you know, focus on peace and be peaceful even in their activities. A few days after that, we are hearing of this very extreme violence that has led to some deaths. How is it affecting political activities from, from your reading? Martin, yes. Uh, the volatile situation is really impacting on political activities uh, is negatively because, uh, like you rightly said, when the NDC flag bearer, Prof Professor uh, Nana Jinopoko Ajimain, arrived, uh, she had to cancel a lot of her activities, especially in the eastern part of the region, that is the Boko Enclave. She was scheduled to visit places like Garu, Timpani, Pusiga, where she was expected to engage women, women groups, among others. But because of the volatile nature, she had to call them off. Uh, when she arrived uh, at the dawn, when the entire, entire township was under tension, and so for that matter, she had to call off on advice of her handlers or oh, so, so, engagements. So, so, Castro, you mean that um, uh, Professor J. Nano Pokwajiman actually truncated her uh, political activities there because of similar security concerns? Yes, she actually, in fact, truncated, cancelled all her activities in the eastern part of the Upper East Region, which is the uh, Boku Enclave, mm. made up of the six administrative uh, areas, where, I mean, constituencies there. Uh, and then she further went on to cancel activities within the Boko municipality where, the, I mean, there's been fighting there uh, because she didn't want to uh, get caught up in all of this ha uh, happening. But that notwithstanding, she was uh, very quick, to, I mean, smart to add that the people needed to uh, quickly embrace peace, work with the security agencies to bring the, uh, the conflict to a close because to her, it was impacting negatively on development, and that was something that was worrying to her. She said she's someone who likes development, she likes peace, and for that matter, if she sees that they are fighting, that means even if she comes to power, she won't be able to bring the needed development that the people have been begging of her. Uh, but that notwithstanding, she was able to touch base with uh, some groups and then met party sympathizers in other parts of the region, like uh, the Castanacana West District and that of Borga, where uh, the atmosphere there is very, very calm. She uh, went to Serigo. Serigo is in the Kastanakana West District, where she met the women groups and met with the chiefs and people. And it was so well, it went so well because there, uh, there aren't problems and uh, the atmosphere there is conducive for political activities. All right, uh, Castro. So, assistance, do we know or do we have clarity on the next steps expected from security authorities or the traditional authorities? What's, what's, what's in the pipeline, you think? Martin, I think uh, even the people of Boko themselves are, are, are 
I mean, appear to be uh, tired of the whole issue of the conflict. The force have been that the traditional authority need to come in and then resolve the issue. The course have also been that the police and the military should increase presence on the highways, particularly the Boku Borga Highway and the Borga Tanga Tamale Walwale Highway. These are very critical, I mean, times, and for that matter, people want to be able to travel, move goods in and from the areas without any sort of problems. But from what we're witnessing, it appears that it's a challenge. And for that matter, they want the police and the military to be heavily present on these streets. Castro Senyala, thank you so much for that report uh, from the Upper East region where clearly the concerns about security and politics has come up strongly. All political activities have been halted as a result of the insecurity in the area. And like Castro just confirmed, when Professor Nana Jane Opokwajiman was there to canvass for votes, she actually had to suspend or truncate her activities there because of similar concerns. Uh, her handlers advised that she leaves the area, although she was able to touch base briefly with some people when she used the opportunity to call for peace. Also, in the camp of the NPP, the presidential, I beg your pardon, the parliamentary candidate of one of the affected areas has also trumpeted the need for a concerted effort to make peace reign. Unfortunately, this has uh, been uh, unheeded to, leading to many people fleeing the area. Alfredo Kansi just walked us through over 700,000 votes up for grabs. If the EC themselves have identified flashpoints and, and the security agencies or the traditional authorities are not able to find a lasting solution to the developments there, the insecurities there, it's likely that we may not just vote in that part of the country. And it could have its own attendant impact on the general outlook of the elections. So we need to trumpet the need for peace everywhere across the country. We are in an election year, so security is of prime focus for everyone and it should be prime for especially the flag bearers or the political actors in this issue. So that is what's happening in the Upper West, Upper East region.